Thanks for coming out. Uh, and I apologize that right after this, I got to take off. I got a 1:30 class that I gotta, I gotta be at. So the uh, the reference to the article that Al referenced is, is up here in case anyone's interested. It's uh, if you look at the article here, it's more geared toward chemical education. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit more broadly today about uh, what is scholarship. And the title of the talk is uh, why this particular symposium might, might ha be better served by having a, a different name. Uh, why the Symposium on Scholarly Activity at SAU might be a better name for the Graduate Research Symposium. And since I'm a chemist, I'm going to have to introduce an equation to you here. Don't worry, it's not too difficult, but it's scholarship is more than just research. And that's, that's the big idea. So this, this is not my idea. This, I, these ideas are not original by me. Um, back in 1990, Ernest Boyer, anyone ever heard of Boyer's work? He published uh, a seminal work called Scholarship Reconsidered Priorities of the Professorate in which he looked at scholarship in a little different way than was being done at the time. And he identified four uh, elements of scholarship. And you can see them up here, discovery, integration, teaching and learning, and application. Uh, current people working on Boyer's idea have sort of modified application to be now what they call engagement. And one more equation for you. Sort of the way Boyer defines scholarship is through these four domains together. Uh, research, which deals with the discovery domain and, and so forth. There's, there's four elements according to Boyer. And I'm going to define each of those as, as, Boyer, as Boyer did. Uh, looks like this is on time. But the first is the, uh, the scholarship of discovery. This is usually what academics think when they hear scholarship. This is usually what they think when they, when they hear research. Discovery research or, or discovery scholarship is the search for new knowledge trying to just figure stuff out. Um, and you know, we, we're all familiar with, with that type of research, um, collecting data, trying to look for new patterns, trying to look for new information. This is what most academics think scholarship is. But according to Boyer, that's kind of like calling the quarterback the whole football team. While the quarterback position is sort of really out there, and it's kind of a sexy position, it's not the whole team. There's more to a football team than just the quarterback. And there's more to scholarship than just discovery, uh, discovery and, and research. Uh, the second mode of scholarship defined by Boyer is the scholarship of integration. And people who uh, are involved in this type of, of scholarship, they interpret uh, the information in their field for others so that others can understand what's going on, to inform, to educate. So in my field, a, a great example of someone who's involved in this type of scholarship would be Bill Nye. Or if you've heard of Neil deGrasse Tyson, these are people who are, are very good at being able to describe what's going on in scientific research to, to the public. Um, the scholarship of teaching and learning, most academics are familiar with this. Obviously, uh, teaching students is part of what goes on in, in an academic uh, institution, an institution of higher learning. Um, and Boyer's work has actually been very good at transforming people's ideas of what scholarship is. Instead of just being defined as research, Boyer's work has opened people's view to the idea that teaching and learning, the scholarship of teaching and learning is also something that's very important, something that we ought to be focused on. However, Boyer's work has not been so uh, successful in getting folks to realize that integration and another facet of scholarship that's important, which is the scholarship of engagement. I have this particular picture shown here uh, because this is a, an aspect of scholarship that, that I'm involved with. We run a, a summer science camp here. And the, sum, um, the summer science camp, in my opinion, is an is a, is a example of 
the scholarship of engagement of, in action. It's when a scholar works in their areas of expertise with people and institutions in the surrounding community for the purpose of service, um, service and benefit. And historically, uh, in the United States, to be a scholar first meant that you were a, a teacher in, a, in an institution of higher learning. Uh, back when institutions of higher learning were being established here in the United States, to be a scholar was to be a college professor. And then with the Im implementation of the land-grant institutions, uh, an additional facet of scholarship was defined wherein uh, scholars in, um, were not just supposed to teach, but they were also supposed to use their expertise for the benefit of humanity. Then with the advent of World War II, uh, there was a huge shift towards uh, research being important in, in, uh, in, higher in higher education. And after that shift, scholarship was sort of hijacked into just being viewed as people that are, are involved in research and publication. And then finally, after uh, Boyer came out with his report, uh, some folks have sort of taken a more expansive view of scholarship, which in my particular opinion happens to be a good thing. And I think it's really good for those of us here at Spring Arbor University, um, for reasons I'll get into in a moment. This is Boyer's data here uh, from 1990. Uh, he surveyed uh, college faculty members all over the nation at a wide variety of institutions. Uh, at liberal arts institutions, at Research One institutions, at community college, all sorts of different institutions. And it, it, it's illuminating to, to look through his work. But nevertheless, I'm just going to present just a little bit of his data here, uh, in which faculty were asked the questions, how important are the following for granting tenure? So in other words, what's important in scholarship? And you can see here, uh, research grants received, that sort of speaks to discovery. Uh, and the, the blue bars are the faculty members responded it was very important, or the red bars it was fairly important. So I'm just showing the percent of respondents that said it's important, at least, at least fairly, maybe even more. Student evaluations, that speaks to the scholarship of teaching and learning. Service within the discipline, that speaks to the scholarship of engagement or the scholarship of application. And then publications, which expands all four uh, disciplines, or excuse me, all four elements of scholarship. And you can see that overall there's not really that much difference between the two, or between the four. Now of course this one's a little low, but overall at least 50 percent of faculty members thought that all four of these elements were important in granting faculty members tenure. And therefore, it can be surmised that at least half of all faculty members, now this, 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 there's information here from folks at Research One institutions, think that all four facets of Boyer's definition of scholarship is important. I don't know what it looks like today. I don't know if anyone's conducted studies uh, up to this point. For those of you who work at SAU, you may be familiar with the SAU Merit Plan. What I think is interesting in the SAU Merit Plan is scholarship is fairly narrowly defined. There's a place where, for those of you who don't know, there's a place where faculty members at Spring Arbor University are encouraged to report to the provost and their department chairs and the dean what kinds of activities they've been involved in throughout the year. And the way it's uh, teased out is scholarship and intellectual leadership. Basically what you write when you're writing your merit plan is you talk about your research and your publications when you're entering information that you've done on your scholarship and intellectual leadership. Uh, teaching excellence refers to teaching the students and service that's more application. So even in the SAU merit plan, scholarship is defined fairly narrowly and perhaps the SAU merit plan ought to be called the SAU scholarship plan because we could just put the four modes of, or the four elements of Boyer's uh, scholarship within there. And we wouldn't have to change anything. We'd just be fitting with what many uh, administrators in higher ed believe scholarship is at this point in time. 
I do believe there's a warning here, however, because many folks who read Boyer's work can assume that, for example, oh, well, I'm teaching the students, so I'm engaged in the scholarship of teaching and learning. Well, I don't think Boyer would necessarily agree with that view. And this quote here um, speaks to what Boyer thinks scholarships it, scholarship is. And, and Boyer's view, and I agree with this view, to be considered scholarship, activities must be tied directly to one's field of experience, of knowledge, and this service is serious, demanding work, and it requires the rigor and accountability traditionally associated with research activities. So the same type of rigor that is applied to research should be applied, and, and self-examination, and even peer review, the same type of mechanisms that we apply to making sure research is quality should be applied to our teaching and learning uh, that goes on with, with students. Now, how might that work out in practice? One idea that I've, I have uh, in which this might be, might be uh, worthwhile, uh, and this is just on the, the scholarship of teaching and learning. If in order to become published in the, in the scientific literature or in the literature, whatever literature, one needs to um, submit their research to anonymous peer review. So other people read your work and then they tell you what they think of it. And you don't even know who's, what, you know, you don't know who's reviewing your work. So people are brutally honest and you have to have tough skin when you submit an article for publication because you read this stuff and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've, I'm an idiot. I can't believe, you know, that, that I made all these mistakes. I submit that in order for the scholarship of teaching and learning to be applied to the same type of rubric that teachers in higher ed should submit videos of themselves teaching to the dean, to the provost, and then the dean and the provost send those videos out to their peers at the institution, but the person submitting the video does not know who they're sending their video to. And then their others watch the other person teach, and then they're brutally honest. You submit comments about what you think's going on in the classroom. And then the person can read it, and you know, you, it, it would help, I think, uh, sharpen what's going on in the classroom. It'd be hard, it wouldn't be easy, but I think it would be a worthwhile exercise for those that were brave enough to, to engage in that type of scholarship. This data here is just to show you what types of scholarships I have tried to engage in here at, at Spring Arbor University. And these represent various research proposals that I have submitted and how many of them have been funded. And you can see I'm not doing real well with research proposals. I haven't, I haven't nailed a single one. I keep trying, but it just, it just doesn't seem to work out for me. On, uh, Proposals that I submit for teaching, trying to get money towards teaching, I, I get about a quarter of those. In terms of engagement, uh, I'm, I'm batting pretty good. That, that's a good record right there in terms of uh, proposals submitted. And I think this is true for a lot of us at Spring Arbor. Uh, we kind of think that we need to aspire to always be doing research when the mission of this organization, well, I don't, I don't want to denigrate I don't want to denigrate research. It's an important facet of what we do, and we should be doing it. But sometimes you need to go where God is blessing. That's what I, that's what I see when I see this data, that I might want to be spending a little more time in these facets of, of scholarship rather than spending so much time here. And I think a lot of us at Spring Arbor University, um, we should be engaged in all these facets of, of scholarship uh, we should, um, I think we should be doing this because we have an opportunity to work uh, where we fit. Um, it's difficult to compete with folks at Research One institutions when, when you're a chemist. We don't have the resources that folks do at the University of Michigan. But folks at the University of Michigan don't really have their pulse on things like science camp. They don't really have their pulse on things like teaching the students. 
And therefore, this view of scholarship is a great opportunity for folks at, at an institution like Spring Arbor to really allow us to champion the things that we're doing here. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. I, I do want to make sure I say we try very hard to, to, to do research. It, we just, you know, there are, there are, um, there are just less barriers <laughs> for us to engage in those other aspects of scholarship in, in chemistry. And I imagine in, in nursing that the, the scholarship of engagement is something that you guys should definitely be, be championing that, that you're doing. I read through you know, the, the various abstracts, and it seems like you guys really have the pulse of that and are doing some, some interesting, neat things in that area. And that's where that, um, that integration scholarship, which I'm not, I'm not real good at that. Uh, Mike Baradovich in our department is excellent at this. But that integration level of scholarship sort of helps bridge that gap. So you sort of have the research up here. The, the integration helps it that flow down to the folks where the engagement happens, I think. Mm -hmm. Sure. We're not. That's right. Maybe not ever. Maybe not ever. But we are something, and, it's, and that something is really important, let's hope. It is, and it's good, and it's good. And we have something to offer, and it's a niche that I think we really should be taking advantage of. Yeah. Because there's not many people fighting in that niche. I, I can't wait to the party. Do you have a term for that niche? For the niche where we belong? Uh, well, for me, the niche is the scholarship of engagement. So that's where a scholar uses their expertise to service the community and, and, and humankind. Uh, an, another niche that we can speak to is um, uh, the scholarship of, of, uh, of integration where people interpret, you know, the research for, for other folks so they just sort of understand what's going on. What was the other one? I forgot that. Teaching, of course, teaching and learning, the scholarship of teaching and learning. But in order for that to be scholarship, we gotta ramp we gotta ramp it up. You know, we can't just stand in front of the class and never have anyone telling us that what we're doing is wrong. All right, that's that's when you get better. You gotta hear what you're doing wrong. And in order for in order for us to consider ourselves scholars as teachers, we have to be willing to stick our necks out and say, help help me, help me change. Help me see what I can do better in the classroom. Then we're doing scholarship. The, the classic division tends to be between teaching institutions and research institutions. And it seems to me there's something <clears throat> in the middle, mm -hmm. wings on either side that you're talking about. And it sounds like that might be what, what we are mm -hmm. in, in a sense, yeah.